Hello and welcome to this video. Today I want to talk about how you as a programmer, as a software engineer can get better at debugging software, at fixing issue in your code or in code that others have created. But before we do that, let me first introduce myself. My name is Florian. I'm a computer science professor. I have more than 20 years of experience in software engineering and my mission is to help you grow your software career, to get better at software engineering, get better at programming. And that's why I'm making these videos. So if you are interested in that, then please subscribe to my channel. Now let's get started. What's the best way to get better at debugging, to fix problems in a more effective and efficient way. And the principle that I'm going to introduce you today is called the traffic principle. That's T R A F F I C traffic as in traffic with cars and motorcycles and so on. And each of the letters in traffic stands for a specific step during debugging. And that's the first important point before we come even to the principles. The worst thing you can do in debugging software is doing it in a chaotic approach, fixing something or making changes checking whether it's fixed or not, making another change, checking whether it's fixed and so on and so on. You don't have a plan. You don't have a systematic approach that will always lead to a lot of trial and error and will not help you solving the problem fast. And to have the systematic approach, to have this plan, traffic is what we use. We have T for track the problem. We have R for reproduce the problem. We have A for automate and simplify. We have F for find possible origins. We have F for focus on likely origins. We have I for isolate the infection chain. And then we have C for correct the defect. And now we will go through the individual steps and I will explain how to do them. Let's start with T as in track the problem. The first thing you need to do when you have found your bug or maybe even a user has found your bug and you got one of these famous, oh, the software crashes, but I don't know why and what I did emails. Once you are there, important is to collect information about the problem, to document the information about the problem and write a problem report, write a summary. There are various techniques and templates you can use for that. Important is that you select something that fits your use case. And you can also just write down everything you know in an unstructured way here. That's okay as well. So first step, track the problem. Second step is reproduce the problem. Now that you have learned when the problem appears, what is the environment looking like when the problem appears and so on, you are trying to reproduce the problem on your system, on your machine. And this is sometimes really hard, right? Sometimes we also have this works on my machine effect. Whatever you do on your machine, it's perfectly fine. And once you push it out into the field, it stops working and creates problems. So you need to figure out how to reproduce the issue, how to get the same problem on your machine. You might need to do changes on your local environment to make that happen, but it's important that you are able to reproduce the issue. Also, some advice here. If you observe a problem during testing in the field, let's say it's, it's, it's a reset or a crash of the software. And you only see this once during your testing, but after that you run the test again and it's gone, right? Don't think that the problem has magically solved itself, right? The problem is still there. You just didn't hit the one specific execution sequence where the problem is actually showing itself, but be sure once you push it out to 100, a thousand or a million users or 
systems or whatever, how you publish your software, you will see it again. So it's important that you understand where this sporadic issue is coming from. Okay, now that we are able to reproduce the issue on our machine, the next step is to automate and simplify. During debugging, we will have to reproduce the issue several times. And also later on, once we have corrected the issue to test whether we have really fixed it, we need to reproduce the problematic sequence several times. So it's important that we ideally automate the reproduction of the problem and simplify the reproduction of the problem. Think of an issue where you need to do one hour data processing calculations before you even are in the critical section where your problem appears. You need then to find a way to somehow get rid of this one hour because you don't want to make a change and then wait for an hour until you can test your code. So the idea here is what can you do to make reproduction of your problem easier maybe by stopping code, by um, providing values that you know are already problematic, by collecting data from the pre-processing and uh, storing it and then giving that to your software rather than doing the computation every time you run the code. Things like that, right? Automate and simplify reproducing the problem. Then once you are able to reproduce the problem and you know where it's coming from or at least where it's showing itself, go back from there. Check the data flow, check the control flow, analyze the code and come up with ideas what might be possible origins of the problem. Right? Really go through the code and check, okay, maybe it's coming from there, maybe here, it could be problematic here, could be problematic here is something I need to check. So you basically write down, or you can also do this in your head, depending on how much possible origins you have, different ideas of what could be causing the problems. And once you have your list of possible origins, the idea is then to focus on the ones that are likely, right? We focus on the likely origins. There are some that are more likely than others. So start with them first, analyze them first, and then go step by step. And then once you have found something that is causing at least a symptom of your issue, that is causing the crash, right? You have found the null pointer then go back in the infection chain. Why do we call it infection chain? The idea is that the null pointer that is crashing your software isn't the actual defect. It's not the problem. Similar to having a running nose. The running nose is not the actual root cause of you being sick. It's something else. Right. So now we have found the symptom, we have found the running nose, so we have found the null point. And now we need to go back in the data and control flow and figure out what's the actual root cause, what's the infection chain through the software. And then once you have done that, we are at C, correct the defect, because yet now you have found what's causing the null point. And maybe it's a missing condition in an if statement or it's something else, right? But now you have found it, you can fix it. And after you have fixed it, the important thing is to test, right? You test for one, have I now fixed the bug that was reported to me? Have I fixed the actual issue? That's step number one. And then equally important step number two, did I break anything while fixing the bug? Because that's very often forgotten from beginners. They only focus on the bug at hand, but don't ensure that the software is still working overall. And that's very, very, very important that you do that, that you still make sure, did I not break anything 
else. Something that's also happening quite often is, for instance, you, you are fixing a bug in the positive case of something and you forget the negative case, right? You only worry about the if, but you never look at the else. Things like that is something that you always should check and make sure that your software is still properly working. So that's my plan that I use when analyzing issues, when I'm debugging software. Again, it's traffic, T for tracked problem, R for reproduce the problem, A for automate and simplify, F for find possible origins, F for focus on likely origins, I for isolate the infection chain, and C for correct the defect. And now I'm curious. Did you already know of the traffic principle or was it new to you? What are you using to debug? What's your plan there? What's your strategy there? Do you think the traffic principle will help you in debugging? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, if you found this video helpful, entertaining or liked it, then please smash the like button to let me know that you enjoyed it. And of course, if you want to further grow your software engineering career, if you want to learn more about programming and software engineering, then please subscribe to my channel so that I can see you in the next video.